People have ruined it with plastic bags for car windows. What the heck happened? Someone broke into my friend's car. I'm assuming to steal the stereo. The car does not have a stereo. The cost to replace the window exceeds the value of the car. There are places, with particular cars, where it makes more sense to just leave the windows down. My sister-in-law lived in one such place years ago. The second people to break a window must have been checking to make sure the big gap in the dash meant the radio had been stolen by the first people. The third through nth people could just reach in and open the door if they wanted to check. I was driving home from school and my frickin driver's side window just blew up. I'm not kidding. Out of nowhere my fricking window exploded. Glass all over my lap and in all the cracks and crevasses of my car. And apparently to add insult to injury it rained really frickin hard for 2 days straight afterwards. I had to get a trash bag from the janitor in the middle of class because it started pouring. My seat got soaked. The electronic panel for my window and mirror controls shorted out so now the only window that rolls down is the driver's window. I would say I learned a valuable lesson. But what is there to learn when your window just freaking kills itself mid-drive? I forgot my wallet in my jeep. So someone decided to remind me by throwing a brick through the window and retrieving the wallet for me. At least now you have a brick. When I had my first car, my friend left his smokes in it. When he went to get them, he locked the keys in the car. I told him to get them out, and the next thing I know he's outside with a hammer breaking my window. I was like dude, that's not what I meant but it was too little, too late. So he patched it up. Only we were a bunch of 17 year old kids and his mom, whose house we were at, wasn't a very responsible human. The best thing we could find was a lay sour cream and onion chip bag, split open. Dude had broken the small window of the two door car, so it wasn't a big space to cover. Anyways, a few days later, this other guy was sitting beside the chip bag window and there was a bit of leftover chip residue so he freaking licked it off. Oh, high school. And then BSP. The best thing we could find was a lay sour cream and onion chip bag, split open. And then BSP. Anyway, a few days later, this other guy was sitting beside the chip bag window and there was a bit of leftover chip residue so he freaking licked it off. And then BSP. I would like to cast my vote for you winning this thread. A piece of firewood that was in the bed of my truck bounced up and broke the window while I was driving. It sounded like a dang gunshot. I hope you taught that piece of firewood a lesson. I had this briefly. Several years ago, I felt like shooting some beer bottles with my BB gun. I grabbed a few, and set them on the roof of my truck. Then I thought, wow, this is dumb. If I set them here, I'm liable to shoot my windows out if I miss. So I rolled my windows down, because I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. Then I walked off a ways, and took a few shots. Inevitably, I missed one, and it grazed the tip of the passenger side window, shattering the entire thing inside the door. So I had a garbage bag for a window for about a week before I got it fixed. I realize now that I am making myself sound like Florida man. And I suppose I deserve that. I love that your response to thinking shooting at your truck was dumb was to roll down your windows, and then shoot at it. Was out being hooligans in my old 1980 Holden with my brother a few years ago. He went to knock a wheelie bin over with his door. Wheelie bin must have been full of concrete or something because the door bounced off it and his head went through the window. Whoa, he must have wheelie bin embarrassed. I had a toilet in the trunk of my SUV. It rode pretty all day. Turning onto my street on my way home I hear a loud shattering noise. Initially I thought the toilet tipped over and broke. It tipped over, right into my rear window and turned it into about 50,000 pieces. Toilet was fine though. And why did you have an unsecured toilet in the back of an SUV? That's like the time my mom put a tiller on the back seat of the minivan and the handle smacked into the window. When I was younger, we were driving back from Florida to home. M.A. In our Dodge Caravan. The back window spontaneously shattered inwards. Maybe from a rock kicked up from the road that hit it just right. Raining glass all over my youngest sister. She was unhurt except for a cut on her leg. But obviously I panicked and leaned on a glass covered suitcase in my haste to get to her. A tiny sliver of glass pierced my finger. The EMT who arrived on the scene looked at it and told me there was nothing in the cut. Two weeks later. 
It still hurt like heck when I pressed on it, so we went to the hospital. The doctor numbered my finger and dug around in it with a syringe for about 10 minutes before he finally pulled out a tiny crescent of glass. I have nerve damage in my finger. Ah. I was a fool and left an amplified cabinet unsecure in the back. It rolled over and its corner smashed out my window. I called up a repair company and they quoted $560 to replace it. So I taped it up with plastic to make sure rain wouldn't get in there overnight. I hadn't planned to drive it, but the swell was good and I hit up the beach that Arvo had a very awkward moment involving a cop. The next day I drove out to an auto wreckers, found a replacement window and installed it myself. Took an hour and cost $60. Two times, thieves in DC. First time, I had left a broken sat nav on my passenger side seat, my bad. So they took that and my iPod and rifled through my crap. I had been living there for less than two weeks. Oh, and my gum. The bastard stole my gum, and it took me about two weeks to notice and I don't know why but that really irritated me. I think more than the actual break-in did. Who steals a man's gum? Second time. For half a roll of quarters and three pieces from my ratchet set. It would have been easier just to take the entire set, as it had a nice carrying case. But no, only wanted those parts. But they left the gum. So I guess it's not too bad. That was about two months after I got the window fixed from the first one. After that I left the bag on. It was the most efficient crime deterrent. Who would steal from a car that was already broken into? Made it 8 months before fixing it and only had one time where someone punched in the bag. I'm still salty because the last time someone broke into my car they stole my fingernail clippers. Which I didn't notice until I ripped my nail and needed to fix it. Butthole. They also left my light on. I had a plastic bag roof this past summer. I parked under a light pole at a mall to take the bus to campus. And they repaired the light pole during the day. They were up high and dropped a tool that went right through the roof of my car. They paid for it and everything but it still took a few days for arrangements to be made. I was waiting to pick up my daughters one day from school. It was cold out and my rear window was foggy so I clicked on the rear window defroster. About 30 seconds later, I hear a loud pop and then see my rear window blow into the car through my rear view mirror. Sad to say, but my first thought was someone was shooting at me or shooting at the kids walking across the field to the cars waiting. I didn't see anyone running or looking around so I figured no one was shooting. I called a glass place to fix it and found out that this isn't uncommon. I guess the rear window defroster shorts and creates a hot spot in the glass or there is a defect in the glass and the window blows out. Drove around with black plastic in my rear window for 3 days. My seat would have been a little wet if that happened to me. I'm glad nobody was shot. I had fancy plastic. That shrink film you use on household windows in the winter. Worked great. Car was broken into and stolen when I was up at school. I found it myself. No junkyard had a replacement. Had to wait until I went back home. Longest. Month. Ever. In my neighborhood some kids got a BB gun and were going around shooting out people's windows. I'm not sure if they ever got caught. I woke up one morning and almost every car on the street, both sides, had a quarter sized hole and spiderwebbed glass in one of their windows. I'm sort of surprised that a BB gun can break a window. A while ago, my dad was using a weed whacker, and there was a stone that shot out and hit the window, shattering it. We didn't have the time money to get tea fixed at the time, so we put some plastic over it. Woke up one morning to go to work and my back window was shattered. $700 phone I left there overnight. $100 mp3 player. $100 bluetooth earbuds. $200 GPS. All there. Nothing taken. Just a broken window. That'll show you not to leave expensive electronics in sight. Wife locked our baby in car on a hot day on accident with keys inside car. Panic due to temperature and new weight on AA would be ours. So I broke window to get door open. Had black bag taped on window for a week or two until had spare money to fix properly. Our son was completely oblivious to it all and happy all the way through. I'd say your first mistake was calling AA. They're not nearly as fast as AAA. That's why they don't have that extra A. Plus you gotta wait for the introductions to be over. Long story short, that's why I only use AAAAA now.
Just scream until someone helps. Not me but my old roommate punched his window when drunk cause he forgot his key in his car. The door was unlocked and he got a fun trip to the air to remove some glass and get stitches. I'm glad he wasn't able to get into the car and drive. When I was in college a guy t-boned my 4D XP. It was like a cheap imitation Mustang. The damage was all over the passenger door but the window was rolled up so it was perfectly intact but could not be rolled down. The car looked like one of those Hot Wheels cars where you hit the door and it flips around to look like it was in an accident. In a ho. It was October and I was glad that I could still drive the car and the window still works. Fast forward a couple weeks and I'm driving down the road with a buddy in the car. We see a friend on the side of the road and we pull over to say hi. As my friend is rolling down the window I start to yell no just as the window shatters into his lap. A few two months of me driving around New England with no passenger side window. With the wonderful plastic bag repair. Because the real repair would have cost more than the car. I think I ended up abandoning that car on the side of the road. I'm picturing you yelling in slow motion. Some Dunbar sort power windows was a better design than hand cranked windows. Unfortunately the motor for the window burned out, and I don't have the $400 laying around to have it replaced at the moment. My grandpa used to always say, just another thing to break every time he rolled up his window in his new truck. It was sunny and dry for about a week, then one night around 2am. Someone decided to smash the passenger side window and grab a bag that contained a toothbrush and a change of clothes. Oh and it started raining too. Two days later, after I was able to get the window fixed, it stopped raining and was all sunny again. My windows stopped working. All of mine except for the front passenger window don't work. And even that one can't be controlled by the master switch on the driver's side. Way back when I was 17 I got high and extremely paranoid. On my way back to my parents house I decided I should roll down the windows to air myself off. When I got home I realized the window wouldn't roll back up. For the next hour my dad and my high as heck but tried to fix it until the window simply broke. Had to use a plastic bag for a few months until I got it fixed. Was backing out of a garage. My ex had gotten out of the passenger side and was telling me how much clearance I had on that side. I'm looking over my shoulder to see the driver's side and check the clearance there. All of a sudden I hear a loud crash. Turns out he'd left the door open when he got out and hadn't noticed as he was watching that side to make sure I was good to back up. And since I was looking the other way, it went undetected. This has been years ago and that window has been replaced, but that's the only plastic bag window I ever had to deal with. How cool would it be to shoot your car door with this .22? What's the worst that can happen? Two hours later, rolls window up and glass chunks gush out of the door. Why? Just why? My window regulator failed during the middle of December. I tried pulling it into place and it dropped into the door. So before I had a snowdrift on my seat, I put a garbage bag over the window. I was too cheap to buy a parking pass for my community college. So I parked it a few blocks away from campus. I left it there for only 2 hours and some guy shattered my window. Bashed in my stock car display. One for mileage and such that was next to the radio. And stole my radio faceplate. Didn't steal the actual radio. Just the faceplate. WHO does that. So I was left with a broken window. Smashed car computer thingy. A useless radio. And he even stole my new lockpick set that I had forgot in the car. Was just curious about lockpicking. Nothing nefarious. So anyway. I had to cover the passenger window with plastic bags and a bunch of tape because unfortunately it was going to rain later that day. On the upside. The Dumbass cut himself while breaking the window. He left a single drop of blood that I got the local PD to run a match for and they eventually found him once he got picked up for some other criminal activity. Back in grad school I was broke as a joke and my rear window stopped closing. It was a power window, so there wasn't much I could do about it. Also I know less than nothing about cars beyond changing a flat tire. I was telling my friend about my plans to go to AutoZone the next day to buy a new motor for the door and figure out how to put it and when she asked if I had checked the fuse box. I had no idea cars had a fuse box. She fixed it very quickly and cheaply, and the plastic came off. I never had to plastic bag it, but I did have my driver's side window taped in place, 
the power motor went out, and all the window came off the guide, so it would drop 2-3 inches if it wasn't taped up. I didn't have $60 for a new motor regulator. That's what I get for trusting the power windows on a 1993 in 2016. Ha, huh, Isuzu Rodeo. Dang fine car otherwise. I miss that. Just bought a 2005's Terror and you'd better believe it has manual windows and door locks. I had borrowed my mom's car for the night, but she thought I was just going to a friend's house who lived 5 minutes down the road. I was actually going to a party in Philadelphia. It was in a sketchy bus neighborhood. But I was 18 and just happy to be drinking and partying with college boys. At the end of the night, my two girlfriends and I head back to the car and realize the passenger side window was smashed in. That's when we found the brick in the car. And that's also when we realized my mom's wallet that she had in her center console was gone. We had to drive an hour home in January in 15 degree weather with no window and glass shards occasionally blowing back at us. My mom was rocking the trash bag on her window for about a week after that. Sorry mom. It's okay. We've all let your mom down in one way or another. Someone broke into our car and had to wait for insurance to go through before fixing it. They stole a couple of worthless things but forgot the 1200 cash in the visor. There was a rash of auto burglary snatch and grabs for stereo systems at the apartment complex I used to live at. After seeing half a dozen cars with plastic in the window in the parking lot I got the idea that I would just put plastic over my non broken window every night to make it look like it had already fallen victim. Had to do this on my old car. It was our honeymoon and we were in Yellowstone camping. I had a VW Bug convertible and the left back window would not roll up. It was a window motor problem. We were in the middle of a national park so we decided to mend it temporarily with plastic. This unfortunately meant we had to keep the top up for most of our trip because of bears and rain and other wildlife stuff. And people. I had to pull off the freeway driving into Marin County in Richmond. CA, which is not exactly a nice area. I pulled up into a gas station to get some money out since I'd forgotten some for the toll. As I close my door smash window just freaking shatters out of nowhere, it's not like I slammed the window. So I had to go in, pull cash out and buy something all while staring out the window praying no one would come and frick with my car. Very stressful afternoon overall. Couple years back, but was making a right out of a parking lot into a busy four lane intersection trying to get into the left lane. The right lane had a tow truck so I tried to inch myself by it and turn into the left lane. Not as many inches were available. Scratched up the frame between the doors and took out the back passenger window. The tow truck driver was P. His tow truck was old and beat the frick up. Guy was examining the already scratched up corner for a couple minutes. If he would have had a magnifying glass he most likely would have pulled it out. We were drunk at a college party and throwing water balloons off a third floor balcony into the parking lot. Someone threw one through my front passenger side window. Found the broken balloon, a lot of glass, and a wet seat the next morning. Some butthole broke into my window to steal a bag full of used gym clothes. The clothes were worthless. But the window is a special order, old Mercedes, that costs more than I can afford at the moment. The car got broken into during a road trip and all of my gear was stolen in San Francisco. Just to add salt to the wound, my body decided it needed to crap itself while I was driving to find a toilet, and I ended up crapping in a alleyway. Needless to say, it was not a good day. One time someone got in my car and stole my old crappy iPod mini, and I was pee. So pee that I slammed my car door, hard enough to snap the cable on my window regulator. I could have bought like 4 of the same iPods from a pawn shop or something for the amount it cost me to replace the regulator. Not to mention the pain in the butt of taping a trash bag to my window until the part was shipped. Violence isn't the answer. The mechanism that rolls the window up failed, and it fell into my door as I was driving. My mechanic eventually zip tied it up from the bottom, so it's permanently up now. Funny story about this, my roommate bought a used van recently whose window winds down but not back up without support. 
He accidentally wounded all the way down in the motor seized up, so he can't put it up without replacing the motor. Since we live in a relatively moderate climate he didn't bother spending the money to get it fixed and just doesn't keep valuable things in his car. Yesterday evening he went outside to move his van and came back inside relatively quickly to let everybody know that there was a raccoon in his van. I gave him the money this morning to buy a replacement motor for his van window. It was Christmas Eve. Some raging alcoholic douche, I assume, decided to break my window with a bottle, then just left. He she literally didn't take anything. It sucked at the time as I was pretty broke being a first year apprentice and all. There was plenty of other better looking cars with owners presumably being able to afford a new window but nope get the guy that can't. So that was pretty merry for a Christmas. Not my car, but I had a friend in high school who wanted to FSU. Frick crap up. We entertained the idea and went along to witness what he had in mind. Turns out the butthole enjoyed breaking car windows with a 9 iron and proceeding to throw eggs inside the car afterwards. I then understood why I saw so many cars with plastic bags for car windows in my area. I had a bad day. In the morning I had surgery to remove aggressive pre-cancer from my cervix. I came home to my apartment to recover to find out that the apartment above me was having their carpet and subflooring completely replaced because the previous tenants had 8 children and that is too many for keeping your apartment floor alright. Work was scheduled so hammer time all day long continued. By the time the evening rolled around I got super sick from the anesthesia wearing off and went to bed. Was roused about 20 minutes later by a lot of loud banging on my apartment door. It was the police. Some drunk pair of buttholes wandered up and down my street. I live in a not so good area of town, and threw full cause glass bottle through my rear driver's side window as hard as they could. Most of the bottle ended up on my dash and there are glass shards and cheap beer over every seat in my car. Using the same method they also smashed in someone else's car window, and two other people's windshields. Didn't steal anything. When the officer brought me out to the car I looked down the street and several other officers had arms full of and opened tall boys that the two buttholes had trailed down the street like Hansel and Gretel. At the grand jury I went to regarding the case one of the cops said he slammed a couple later in the parking lot spoils of war. Presumably after his shift. Haha. <laughs> Apparently after all the window smashing these guys then went to a convenience store and tried to jump some dude who was getting a few groceries. Dude Hamakad the main instigator right in the face with a full gallon of milk and ran into the store where police were called and they were arrested. Sheriff said he would try to get me a copy of the security footage of that happening just so I can delight in it. I really hope he pulls through. Edited for typos. Also, a previous time this happened someone smashed out my two rear small windows, drivers and passenger sides, and tore my rear passenger door apart so they could steal stuff. I don't leave anything in my car because I used to live in a city where there was a lot of that kind of theft. The suck part was that my doors were unlocked, but they were frozen shut because it was January in freaking North Dakota where I was living for a little bit and you needed to really pull on them to get them to open so the thief just assumed they were locked. Someone out of his mind on something tried getting into my car. When the door didn't open he took a pole and smashed the back and side windows crawled inside and into the front seat. At this point I was outside wondering WTF he thought he was doing. Failing to start the car he apparently made a decision to try rolling the car away. He took the handbrake off and crawled down the hill me walking alongside the entire time. Eventually he hit the curb at the bottom of the hill because he couldn't turn with the steering wheel locked. The police arrived. I unlocked the door and he got dragged out screaming how the office let him borrow the car and how they couldn't prove it was him his toxicology report comes back this month so we'll find out what he's charged with. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.